Welcome back to our third lesson on our first chapter dealing with introductor, an introduction to sociology. Today's lesson, we're going to look specifically at the perspectives of sociology and become a little bit more aware of how scientists and from the viewpoints that scientists use in order to study people in a society. So we're going to look particularly at conflict, functionalist, and symbolic interactionist perspectives, as well as not only that, but learn exactly what is the sociological perspective and how that works to influence how a sociologist does their work. So learning intentions. We're going to look and identify what the sociological imagination and sociological perspectives entail. We'll look at a functionalist theory, the conflict theory, as well as the symbolic interactionist theory and how looking from these three different perspectives can sometimes give us three different viewpoints or lenses as to what's going on within a group, within a society, and even within the world in some cases. So, sociological thinking. Let's introduce you to what's known as the sociological imagination. C. Wright Mills, who is another sociologist, he kind of defined it as this. The vivid awareness of the relationships between private experience and the wider society. So this idea of how do I fit into this society? How do I personally fit into this group of people? Fit into my family? Fit into my school? Uh, fit into my, my neighborhood or country? Or how do I even fit into this world? It's relating you personally to how it relates to everyone else. The ability to make connections between yourself and the wider world, kind of how I just explained it. And to look at these connections and, and understand this idea of sociological imagination, we look at perspectives and trying to view society from a particular lens, not our own personal independent lens with our own personal biases, but from a scientific perspective. So we'll be looking at that today. Looking at a society systematically in a scientific way to identify patterns and their connections. And that is the best way of kind of summarizing the sociological perspective. And we use three different ways of doing that. Before we get into those perspectives, we need to understand that we can see things from a couple different types of lenses. Um, when I say lenses, think of a camera. You sometimes have a zoomed in lens and you sometimes can have a wide angle or a zoomed out lens. We relate those as far as called uh, using micro, -so micro sociology and macro sociology. The macro sociology looks at the wide lens, the big picture society or large groups as a whole in a large scale. Not only that, we look at long-term effects of things that occur in society. An example of uh, macro-sociological research might be how the Black Lives Movement from one place, which is a micro-sociological perspective, then broadened out into a bigger change or a bigger thing that went around the United States and even around the world. So looking from a small lens and a big lens, a zoomed in lens or a zoomed out lens. The macro perspective is from the zoomed out lens, the big perspective, the world or large group perspective. Similarly, as I just kind of hinted to, is the micro perspective or the micro sociological way of looking at things from a more zoomed in perspective. Smaller groups, uh, an individual within a smaller group or um, how that small group is having an effect on what's going on around them. This is more of also a short term or kind of like a day to day interactions. What's happening in the short term? These two are related. And as I just mentioned, one can affect the other. So it's important to kind of understand that what happens in a small group can affect a larger group and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And finally, understanding globalization on how, again, these little things can affect things on a global scale. 
So there are a number of theoretical perspectives that I alluded to. Sociologists develop theories of how society works in order to test them. And in order to do that, we have to look and see how groups are similar to each other or different from one another scientifically. Not only that, we have to see what works in groups and what doesn't work in groups. And to do that, we look at and use these three particular perspectives in general. The, the functionalist perspective, conflict perspective, and the symbolic interactionist perspective. Three different ways that we can view things going on. Sometimes they're related when you look at the different perspectives together. Sometimes they're completely different. So it's important that when we're looking at a group of people, we are looking at it from one of these three perspectives or viewpoints. So the first one we're going to talk about, which is probably the easiest one to understand, is the conflict perspective, which, as we learned in our last lecture, was developed by Karl Marx. The conflict perspective is a macro sociological perspective, so it looks at society as a large group, um, a, a city, a, a large factory, uh, a state, or, or even a nation. It defines society as being a um, thing of conflict, of problems that are caused by other groups of people. Um, as a, the last lesson, we talked about the proletariat, the, the bourgeoisie, on how you've got this one group of power looking to control another group of power, uh, looking at how, in this case, the dynamic, this dynamic results in continuous social change, which is its normal state of affairs, this normal idea that in order to get things done, there must be conflict. Uh, unfortunately, the recent political stuff going on in our country, we see a lot of conflict, particularly between people of different political beliefs, of uh, Republican or Democrat, for example one totally different than the other. Uh, the rich versus the poor, the upper class versus the lower class, those that have and those that don't have. Conflict theory heavily focuses on inequality and the differential distribution of power and wealth. And this can not only just apply to uh, money and uh, power, but it also applies in regards to feminism as well. Um, women not always having a particular ranking in society's power. So looking at their power struggle, particularly in the last 50 to 60 years, has also been a big subject that sociologists have been looking at as well, on how women, again, have been changing their uh, power, or their, the, have been using this struggle of power for change uh, for the better. The second perspective is known as the functionalist perspective, which was developed by Emile Durkheim. He may, this is another example of a macro perspective. He makes the assumption that society is a large collection of interdependent parts. There's a lot of different things going on at the same time. And it's because of these different parts, these different things going on simultaneously, that allows society to function. He claims that society is stable and works through this simple of consensus and cooperation. When this doesn't happen, he considers this to be a dysfunction of society, when something is not working as part of society's plan. Say, for example, somebody breaking the law. That might be an example of dysfunction. The purpose of laws is to keep people safe, orderly, things like that. And when somebody isn't willing to do that, to follow along with the status quo, that's considered a dysfunction, and it needs to be corrected as far as functionalists go. Sometimes you can get a little bit of conflict in there, but the idea being is that things are the way they are because things function better that way. Okay. Schools are there to make society function better. Police is there to help society function better. Uh, technology functions for the betterment of society. There are leaders that are there telling us what to do because that helps society function. So that, that's the functionalist perspective. Each part of a society working together 
to benefit the whole, much like a living organism, like a human body. The last perspective is called the symbolic interactionist perspective, and it was developed by Max Weber. This is one of the micro perspectives where we look at a smaller group of people, the, the, uh, the small um, street gangs or your cliques, things like that, looking at how people interact within a small group, within a society. Symbolic is, um, is larger than what it might sound like. Um, but a simple explanation is we can understand how a group functions by what we see in that group. If you sit and watch a group of people, within about five minutes, you can kind of see who is the leader of that group. Usually the one that talks a lot, the one that kind of keeps people in check, uh, things along that nature. Similarly, you can kind of see within a small group who the lowest people are in that group or the or the, the last ranking person in that group. They're usually the most quiet, the one that's usually made fun of in that group, things like that. And we can all learn that not by being in the group, but simply by observing and looking at how they interact with one another. Okay, So that's part of symbolic interactionism, looking at the symbols and the interaction between people to understand how that group functions. So, as a review, today we looked at the sociological imagination and perspectives, kind of defined the difference between the two, and saw hopefully how they were related to one another. We also looked at the three theoretical perspectives that sociologists use in order to better understand groups. The functionalist perspective, the conflict perspective, and the symbolic interactionist perspective. I hope you got some good information from this video. I do encourage you to look back and review it. Obviously take some notes on it if you need to. Don't forget to make sure that you are doing the activities in the textbook and other materials that are given to you. They do provide you with additional resources to explain things that go a little beyond what I was able to present in here. For example, the, the idea of what's known as dramaturgy is mentioned in the textbook. So please make sure we are using these other resources to help us better understand the material. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next time in class or online. And once again, please make sure you have an excellent day. See you guys later.